but thank you so much for having me. It's great to be out, isn't it? Um, I went a little bit crazy during lockdown. Uh, like when I got the call to do this gig, I wasn't sure if it was Geraldine or one of the many new voices in my head <laughs> developed. Um, I did have to spend part of my lockdown with my parents. Did anyone else have to do that? Yeah. Um, I don't know how you felt about it. Mine were quite annoying. Um, one of the annoying things about them is that they're quite stingy. Um, anyone else's parents that? Yeah, thank you for feeling me. Um, they're pretty stingy, it's very annoying. Um, on the one hand, they do, they, it's great because, you know, they moved here from India when I was six. They had to save up everything and that's why, you know, we have a better life because of them. So thank you very much. On the other hand, we're fine now. It's, <laughs> it's been 20 years. Um, <laughs> and they still act like World War III is about to happen any second. Um, it's frustrating. Um, my dad has an Excel spreadsheet of all of our spending from June 1988 to today. Yeah, no, this is actually true. Um, it's interactive and he's proud of it, so... Bless. Um, that's great. Uh, I don't know if your parents did this. Um, my dad, instead of buying a $5 perfect mango, he will spend $10 on 20 really brown, mushy ones. It's like his rule of thumb is, I'm not buying it unless it's brown and seeping liquid. Yeah. Um, and it's annoying because my whole life I grew up thinking that I hated fruit, um, but it turns out that it was just off. <laughs> You're like, oh, strawberries aren't meant to taste like rancid acid. I didn't know. Uh, <laughs> Um, I do love my parents very much it, just because they tried so hard to give us a great life um, and they were a very typical migrant story, you know, they cared a lot about me and my sister's education, probably more than they cared about us. Um, <laughs> just education was a big deal and uh, one way that they thought they could help us get one was to send us to an all-girls school. Um, did anyone here go to an all-girls school? Give us a cheer. Yeah. Yes. Um, who liked it? No, <laughs> no one. <laughs> Um, yeah, I, I liked my girls' school, it was pretty good. Uh, it wasn't a normal, you know, private girls' school. It was a select entry school, sorry to brag. Um, <laughs> you had to like do a test to get in and everyone was a huge nerd. Um, and we were still were bitchy, like just not about looks and money and stuff. Um, so you wouldn't hear things like, oh my God, did you see what Courtney's wearing? What a fucking slut. You wouldn't hear that. Um, instead, we were bitchy about brains. So you'd hear things like, Oh my God, Priya sat the Gamsat three times and now she's going to be a doctor before me. Fuck my life. <laughs> <laughs> we were always stressed, always crying on the train home. Um, and not, never because... There were always girls crying on the train home from our school. Um, not because they'd lost their boyfriend or, you know, their phone. It was always because we'd lost our calculators. <laughs> Um, and rightly so, because they're very expensive, so... <laughs> um, anyway, I did like my girls' school a lot because when I got there, it was very multicultural, which was awesome. Everyone was from somewhere else. Um, but I quickly realised that we all just easily called each other racial slurs, like, all the time. Um, did anyone else at school do this? Probably don't want to say. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you kind of just got really used to it and it was... It made sense to us at the time as like little year nines. We were like, yeah, that makes sense. We all had our place, like each race had their place in the social triangle that we formed. Um, you know, you had your Asians, your curries like me. Yep, um, proud to represent. And um, your skips. And initially I was like, what is a skip? Uh, why? And it turns out because kangaroos. I don't know. It's just like why people don't have a food group for some reason. <laughs> just the national animal. Um, so that's cool. <laughs> and we kind of all lived in this, like, e racial, ecological... I don't even know what these words are. Ecological system. Um, at the very top of the pyramid, you had your hybrid races. Um, we... <laughs> they were just better than us and we knew it. Um, <laughs> if you were, like, a mixed-race kid at my school, you got everything you wanted. You were the hottest, the smartest. Um, and we just kind of bowed out of the way because they were the way of the future. So... <laughs> It was fine by us. Um, you know, you had your Eurasians, your Chindians. Um, some <laughs> sometimes I was mistaken for a Chindian, just saying. Um, <laughs> and they were the best days of my life. Um, <laughs> anyway, it was good. Um, <laughs> we lived in this harmony. Um, and <laughs> I just remember we were all living in peace. And then one day uh, the teachers barged into our school assembly and they were like, 
girls, you've got to stop standing at the platforms on Flinders Street calling each other curries. It's, good. it's making the school look bad. Um, so I just remember like turning to my fellow curries and being like, what the fuck is this bitch on about? Um, didn't help that most of our teachers at our school look like they were from the first fleet. <laughs> We were like, go back to Captain Cook, I don't get it. Um, <laughs> but they underestimated us because we were silent then, but by, because we were smart, by the time we got home, you know, we'd hacked some computer systems, we were all on MSN. Um, <laughs> and, you know, we had unionised, we had a network, we had a treaty. Um, <laughs> we were gonna fight the teachers back. And so we came back to school the next day with this force of intellectual arguments that the teachers just couldn't take. Um, and I remember the second assembly, we had a spokesperson who was like a to-be lawyer. And she did this empowered speech that, where she was like, we as curries reserve the rights to call each other curries. She's a mild curry, she gets it. Hot curries, don't even go there. <laughs> like jungle curry, cray cray, papadams, Rogan Josh. It just went on and on. It was like this food explosion. <laughs> and by the end, the teachers were like, okay, you can call each other curries, it's fine. Um, and we did for the rest of the time at the school. Um, so anyway, it's funny because I recently got um, my invitation to go back to our like 10 year reunion, even though it looks like I graduated yesterday, I know. Um, <laughs> Um, and it was weird reflecting on this kind of weird moment of empowerment that was very problematic. Um, and laughing at the fact that if I went back to this reunion, oblivious to the fact that it's 2021, that we've had some social movements going like, hey Priya, what's up? Are you still my tikka masala? Um, which I won't do. Um, that's my time, I think. So thank you so much for being an awesome audience. I'm Evie Majanda, bye.